<laughs> oh, my mic was muted. Sorry about that. And I uh, didn't have my chat window open, so it took a long time for me to notice it. Hello, Mr. Dright. How are you feeling today? Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was changing this stuff. Uh, we don't need to override updates just yet here. Item tool, why is this all still red? Oh yeah, I forgot the other this one. So basically, when the player hits mouse down, then <coughs> then the game, uh, the UI system, which currently handles those events, will uh, take a look at the player and which uh, which item he has selected in the hotbar, which item stack. And then based on that item stack, you will uh, go to the, uh, the the tool, the the item that's uh, the item that defines the type of item inside this item stack, and it will call on the item to actually execute the functionality related to that specific item I don't know if I explained that clearly probably not but it might make sense after a while okay um, this no longer works back health stack Okay, so let's now um, make sure that mouse press also gets called. Uh, this is on GUI. You know what? I'm going to change this so that this is also part of the item class. Because I do not like the or oh, is this a tool or not question. Let's 
that's one we no longer need. Can make this an item. Of course, the null check remains because otherwise we might be dealing with empty item stacks. We don't want to process those. Item stacks which do not have an item are uh, they will be uh, this one. We don't want to deal with that. Now let's render the tool item on going tool. Yeah. Be honest, we also should really To be honest, I also want to render people how items being held in their hands, but I'm not entirely sure if the way we currently do that tools is is appropriate. Ongoing render help tool. That's this one. Yes. I probably want to change this to item. And the held item. See if everything still works. So now, depending on what we have selected, player holds this item, and right now we just yeah, we just hold it near our face and stuff, but that's something we can work on eventually.
just adding some brackets around this around these statements so that we can don't know why Visual Studio is being an ass about formatting. Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Keep a boolean. Ah, fuck. Now we need to... We need to check for all the mouse buttons. Actually, no.
Okay, so first we check. Uh, first we check each button, see if we need to set the mouse down, if we need to mouse up events. Then we check to see if any are pressed. Event. This is not perfect, it's probably problematic in several ways, but Play a decent start. Yeah, that's that's just not not good. Um, let's see. I think we're going to have to move this to work to the update function. Let's move all of that to update. Yeah, so tools. This one still needs, probably still needs to be an ongoing. Yeah, I'll probably just need to rewrite this whole thing.
Okay, let's try this again. And now we handle all our updates, our mouse handling related to items. And we handle it in update instead of on GUI. Because, yeah, on GUI has always been uh, kind of a stopgap measure. Update's really the better place for it. Now, everything still works. This is good. It's a feeling that there might be a little bit of, bit of a glitch here. Yeah, looks like it. A bit, a bit weird. Might be uh, because of a chunk boundary. It's not related to items or something. It's something else, probably. Oh, uh, maybe it is. Yeah. Yeah, so because. Because we are on a chunk boundary, this I, this tile does not get updated. Uh, this tile does not get updated when this tile changes. I if I change these. That's something I'll have to uh, work on, yes. So yeah. Deleting blocks works again. Hope the mouse press event works correctly now. Can collapse these, mouse down, on the thing, mouse pressed, mouse up, yes. Mouse down, mouse pressed, mouse up. Yeah, so that's how it should be. So now we don't need to capture any state inside the item, which is uh, a very good thing. Uh, one other thing we may want to deal with is. Um, Updates. So that's currently not going to be used by anything, but might use might be used eventually. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I wanted to uh, make it in such a way that. Um, That I can hold the mouse down and just remove blocks by digging them. 
So, how do I want to do this? Start breaking tile. Stop breaking tile. So, what if I... <coughs> right now the mouse up event will stop breaking tile. Uh, based on this position. But that really does not make all that much sense. Because it may no longer be at the same position. So which 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 style did we stop breaking? Is is it the one that we started that we started to break, or is it the style that our cursor is currently positioned at? I think that may this may be the entire entirely the wrong way to go for breaking tiles. So perhaps it's. Uh, Perhaps it's the world management system who needs to deal with this. Let's see. Maybe we just need something like uh, something like mouse pressed, and then in mouse pressed we call break tiles, and if that gets called a specific number of times, then the tile gets broken. If it gets called a certain number of times um, in succession. Um, I'm getting interrupted. Okay, so yeah, um, maybe it's better if we uh, maybe if it, maybe it's better if we use mouse pressed for this kind of stuff. Mm. Call world manager repeatedly. So if the world manager gets perhaps I don't know uh, uh, Twenty calls or something to break tile, then then finally the tile gets broken, because you you don't want it to happen instantly, at least not for the gameplay. Uh, maybe for editing tiles, you want to do it instantly, but yeah. Wonder how Minecraft does it. Oh, one other thing you need is you need things to be on a tick rate. Um, because you don't want breaking tiles to be quicker on a high tick rate, uh, on a high frame rate. And you also want to make it design the system in such a way that it's easy to actually, uh, that it's easy to actually do networking. Of course, would not be very efficient to send like uh, uh, many messages which all say basically the same thing 
I am breaking a tile. I am breaking a tile. I am breaking a tile. For the local situation that's still reasonable, just repeatedly calling a function. That's a little bit of overhead, but not that much performance. But if you're talking about sending messages off the wire, then really you should try to minimize that as much as you can. So you really want to minimize it into I'm st I'm breaking a tile and I stop breaking a tile. You don't want anything in between. So if there's any repetition going on, like if you have to call a function repeatedly to make sure that tile is getting broken, then probably want to filter it out locally and then only send the important message messages to the uh, to the server. So those start breaking tile and stop breaking tile probably should still should still exist. But maybe we do not want to call those directly. I'm not entirely sure how to handle this this problem. Maybe the maybe the world management system could like maybe the world management system takes uh, frequent updates like I am breaking a tile, I am breaking a tile, I am breaking a tile, and it then keeps some sort of bookkeeping, uh, maybe a list of tiles that a player is currently trying to break. Uh, or maybe in just one single tile that he is currently trying to break, and as long as the player is sending these calls, like I am breaking a tile, I am breaking a tile, then this uh, timer gets set to zero, and if the player is not sending these these calls then the timer starts running uh, until you get to some kind of timeout and you can pretty safely assume that the player is no longer no longer trying to break that tile and you can call stop breaking the tile I think that would be a good way to deal with it because then you have the, you can have the the world management system take care of all the the tricky work and the tool just needs to say I want to break this tile <coughs> and then later on a tool can also um, Pass along some kind of damage value, maybe like the the amount of damage it, it's doing to a tile, and that then um, how much damage you're doing to a tile basically mean how long it takes to break that tile. For example, a a stone pickaxe might do like. Yeah, maybe one or two damage per tick and a diamond pickaxe may do then like five or perhaps even ten damage per tick so then eventually the damage will receive They'll go over some kind of threshold value that actually gets broken. And of course, this threshold value would be dependent on the type of tile. Sometimes tiles are really, really soft, like perhaps sand or dirt, and others will be really 
yeah, really, really hard. Something like uh, dense ore, or maybe obsidian stuff like that. So yeah, I think I I think that would be a good idea. Then also the world management system can also take care of stuff like uh, sending the messages and then the tools do not need to care about this. You do not need to worry about it. That uh, that makes a lot of sense, I think. So this. Uh, <coughs> how should I name this? Do break tile? I don't know. It's it's a bit of a weird weird method. Um, these should no longer be public, or at least not be called from here. Yeah. Maybe it's something like uh, damage tile. Damage tile. <coughs> Damage value. might be a good one because you can also deal with stuff like explosions and stuff which may damage the tile immediately Not entirely sure Maybe attempt break tile. Right. Gradually break time. Break tile over time. Yeah, this probably 
it's a bit of a weird name, but it's probably the most accurate, I think. Break tile over time. And this will repeat repeatedly be called. World manager will take those calls, turn them into something useful. The dial damage value will determine how much damage uh, is being done each tick by this tool. Now, of course, we need to generate this. I'll make these private. We might want to make them public eventually again, but now I think this makes the most sense. Because they no longer need to be public. I like to keep things private unless there's an actual reason to make them public. Break tile of time. <coughs> so what do we want to do here? We determine which tile to break uh, we want to add uh, we want to determine the the, the the grid cell and the tile which is in that grid cell and we want to break this and we want to add this information to some kind of uh, some kind of list of uh, current tiles being broken. Um, maybe to keep things simple. Um, right now, I'll just make sure that it's one item list. But eventually, you might want to uh, be able to break many tiles at once for example you might want to break to break a square of four by four tiles a square of two by two tiles or maybe a square of uh, uh, nine nine tiles in a three by three shape or maybe you want some kind of cross shaped shape of tiles being broken so basically, larger or more advanced tools will be able to more efficiently manipulate the landscape. So that's why it can be useful to uh, be able to break multiple tiles at once. So a list is probably, probably the best idea. Maybe we want to the grid grid position over here. And the, 
entirely sure. Basically, if we find the tile that we want to break, then we need to add this tile to the list. If it's not already in the list. It should contain for every item the following. Um, target grid, grid cell coordinates, yeah, you could put the type of tile in there, but you do not strictly need it. Uh, health. No damage. And the timeout. So I think this is what these um, list items should contain. Um, so basically, we need to get we need access to the the relevant grid and the coordinate. So basically, which tile we need to remove. Uh, this tile will start off with a certain health value, uh, which depends on the type of tile and we also need to store how much damage the tool is doing each tick because um, we need to store that somewhere and eventually um, th this break tile over time it's, it's only going to be called um, when the user is uh, so, yeah, hitting the tile and the the actual updating of the health of the tile, and you probably want to do that per tick instead of per update. So that's why it's probably Another thing might be that might be interesting is to instead of having health and timeout, could also just uh, increase the health of the tile when there is no break tile over time. Um, let's see.
So yeah, you could say like uh, if the tile timeout has been reached. So maybe if if the player did not hit the tile for say two seconds, and the timeout is reached and no longer any damage is being done to the tile. Then it starts to regen its health. Yeah, so if, I think the timeout needs to be really short, like if you, if you don't hit the tile, if you don't keep calling this thing every, like, every tenth of a second or so, then you probably want to stop breaking the tile. Then when the tile is no longer being damaged, then it can start healing again until its health is full again. And then, then it's as if nothing happened. And then you can use the same stuff, this uh, tile health, you can use that to like make a little animation for tiles slowly getting damaged and when they damage when they are hitting max damage then they will pop out and turn into tall entities in the world or rather uh, uh, entities containing item stacks tall entities are something different basically item entities just uh, <coughs> items spewing out into the world. Um, maybe there's. Um, we'll probably want to change some stuff here. Let's avoid break tile immediately. Okay. Um, place this. This.
just update my uh, my working on info bar. Breaking items. Breaking tiles. Okay, so we isolated this into some thing. Start breaking tile. Let's see. Right now we get the world from the player, which probably is not the best way to deal with things. Maybe this makes more sense. Tile. Right now we do not care which player is actually breaking the tile, but we may care about that in the future. In fact, we are very likely to care about that in, in the future, because we might want to implement some kind of um, restrictions on which tiles can be broken by which players. Maybe you want some kind of uh, protection system which uh, prevents griefing, for example, that you cannot destroy blocks uh, or tiles placed by other people.
now I've just restructured stuff a bit. Just make a copy of this and comment it out. And of course, we need access to, to some kind of grid coordinates. And it makes I think it makes more sense to do that here. To actually do many of these things. Now I should, everything should still work, and note the, uh... okay, are we having network problems? I hope not. Hmm, weird. Everything should still work the same way it did just now. Okay. Yeah. Now we can change this to break over time. Use these same things. Use these same arguments. 
and we don't need to worry too much here about all the stuff like uh, where is the tile actually located, stuff like that. But it's still useful to get the world position. Just in case. So do we want to use a regular list for this, or something like a dictionary? Mm. Stuck. So a tile that is currently being broken, a breaking tile, would that be an appropriate name? Be a damaged tile? No. Yeah, tile breaking might be uh, best. 
So this has um, a grid ID. Grid coordinates. We'll have a health value. Actually, maybe um, a, time, a timeout doesn't actually make that much sense. We might be better off doing something like uh, last frame touched. Basically, this will tell the last frame that this tile was touched. We can do things based on that. For example, if we know that um, because then we can make a choice. We can implement different kinds of behaviors depending on what we want to try out. So basically, you could take one behavior um, where you just um, slowly regain health if you're not uh, actively hitting it. Or you could say something like, uh, uh, if it's been one or two frames ago since we last hit it, then we stopped hitting it and we just reset the whole tile. That's also something you could do. Uh, and you could implement both of these options without needing to um, without needing to change this structure. So I think that might be a good way to go. Last touched frame. I think this is a better name for it. So now we need to actually make some kind of lists to store this thing. So I think I do not want to deal with the dictionary right now. I'm just going to use it list
Tiles breaking. A list of tiles that are currently in the process of being broken plus associ associated metadata. Yes. Okay. Maybe go for a dictionary after all. It's really, really annoying that we don't have tuples in C Sharp. At least not in the Unity version. You can just get all this annoying stuff uh, as soon as you need to combine some, uh, some, uh, some key values, some composite keys. It makes even simple stuff a lot of hassle. So I can choose to maybe overwrite some stuff in this struct, but it's a lot of work. So maybe we should just make a struct called tarpos tar position.
Okay. Now we can use those as keys to index into the into a dictionary. Breaking dot contain. does not contain the key, then we should start breaking tile. And instead of this, we are going to add this new item to the list. What? Should just use this one, but like top position. I guess we'll need to make a constructor for this one. Of course, you can also just leave out the constructor and just set everything manually. But then you can run into problems with maintenance. For example, you might 
decide you need to add a new field to the structure then because you're not using the constructor you can actually forget to set the new field field to uh, the proper value If you uh, explicitly make a constructor to set these values, then you don't need um, yeah well when you set all the values through a constructor, then if the constructor is no longer correct, then you can you can get a warning by the compiler of course you can still set your value uh, you can still still forget to set your value in the constructor but it's, it's still less chances for things to go wrong eventually you might have several places in the code where a structure like this is used uh, and, and created um, if you do it without the constructor, then and you might have to hunt it down everywhere to see that it's using the correct uh, methods everywhere. Sometimes Visual Studio can be not that smart. made some kind of syntax error somewhere not really seeing it Why does the method need the return type? It's it's not a it's a constructor. It, th those don't need a return type. What what's going on? Why? I'm just being stupid. Mm -hmm. 
Am I just overlooking something weird? Yeah. Yeah, stupid. I was just uh, blind or something. I was using tall position for the constructor name instead of the <laughs> name of the destructor I was working in. Happens when you try to do multiple things at the same time. So yeah, this should be all right now. Else. I better do task breaking dot try get value boss So we turn the tall position, make an empty tall breaking variable. We check the dictionary to see if it's in there. Update the breaking of tile. If it's not in there, then we start by making, by breaking a new tile. And this all makes a lot of sense. Tall breaking. Tall position, last touch frame. Is time dot frame counts. <coughs> that should be pretty much it for break time of time. Now we should add this stuff to take world, I guess.
this one should basically update the the lists. No, no, we, we cannot modify the dictionary while we are iterating over it. It's, yeah, let's... Something like this. Now at the start of the for loop, we make a new list. Or does it? Um, I better make make a temporary field, uh, temporary variable for that. So breaking. Yeah. Okay, so we take the values, put them in the list, iterate over the list, so we can actually change the dictionary without having to worry about the, the iteration failing. Uh, all breaking. Last touch frame.
Okay, so if the last touch frame is recent enough, then we continue breaking the tile. And if not, then we stop breaking the tile. For now, that just means removing it from the list. Who is breaking the tile? That's also something we need to worry about. I just added a new value to this constructor, which means we should be getting some errors.
access to the fucking grid and stuff. Let's remove this. So we don't need world position. Just stop breaking a tile. I think. I don't think it will be useful. <laughs> Okay, so break tile over time. Refine the tile position. <coughs> so try to. If the tile is already being broken, if it's so, then update it. Okay. 
And if it does not exist yet, then start breaking a new tile. Okay. Stop breaking a tile. Thing more suited to this place. Uh, of course, we want to have it. Simply mode test. We could also just this top position top us. Would make make it easier. This one we still need to work on. Update breaking tiles. Continue breaking the tile. Tile health minus equals tile breaking. Damage per tick. Modify. That's interesting. So we remove health. Tile health. If mama don't or equals to zero, then remo uh, remove the tile immediately and remove it from the list. Yeah, now we need access to the world and grid and stuff, which we don't really have just yet. Maybe we do.
frame count minus last frame. Two maybe. Lower than or equals two. I don't know if Thick World is already being called. I do not think so. Friend.
And now we have something resembling a tick rate. And this might or might work, or maybe it will crash and burn horribly. Doing something at least. It's not really doing what I want. It does not seem to do anything. Goody. Can get rid of this. Most events are correct, so we can remove those. Okay, that's weird. There's not even any tiles there. Why is it calling that?
okay. Break tile of time, start breaking tile, break tile of time. Stop breaking tile. Over time, start breaking down. Nope. Get down. It's quite a few stops in there. What happens if I a lot of Moved health, moved health. Stop breaking, back breaking. Might be the is recent calculation. get executed also uh, we also want to the current health Oh, I think I know the problem. Doesn't actually update the changes in the dictionary. of time starts Oop. 
stop breaking tile. Never gets farther than a few frames. Make this class. This is not long. Yeah, now we can slowly remove tiles. Then of course you could add some kind of animation or something. By simply rendering, rendering that little dictionary or list. I just remove all these logs, all the logging. Okay, that works. Let me commit the stuff.
Implemental breaking of time. So I think I'm going to take a break now. Um, um, I'm feeling a bit tired. And I think we got quite far right now. Yeah, well, we didn't really get very far, but we managed to get this, this little thing done. Uh, at least uh, to a basic level. Obviously still a lot of work required in, in all sorts of ways, but uh, we have gotten a little bit farther. And we didn't get stuck, which is also always a possibility, getting stuck on some weird ass bug. So yeah, I'm happy with what I achieved today. Um, yeah. Uh, Last week I didn't develop or stream any, anything. Um, one reason was because it was really hot. Uh, another reason was because I, my motivation was a bit low. Uh, that happens sometimes. Uh, I'll try to um, get back into my rhythm, but I don't want to uh, uh, run too fast. <laughs> I want to take it slow. Um, and I'm going to see if I'm, if I can figure out some stuff to do and maybe I'll stream tonight some more in a few hours. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'll just, uh, stream tomorrow uh, again in the afternoon. So yeah. Uh, goodbye. I hope you, uh, found some interesting stuff here. I wish you all a good, good, good day. Goodbye.